I built a fallout shelter using a plan from the 1960s US government. Uh, you can see here that there's logs that cross over a dirt uh, ditch. A uh, ditch is about three foot deep, three feet wide, and then the log poles go across and you pile another 30 inches of dirt on top. The 30 inches of dirt is super important as that's what absorbs radiation. If you're just under your house, under your regular roof, uh, almost no radiation is absorbed. I think it's like three or 400 feet uh, uh, for every one foot of earth that absorbs uh, radiation. So super important to have thick dirt or concrete above you. Uh, here's another angle of the same one. You can see it's about a three foot deep hole, uh, three foot wide, and then poles across the top and then dirt mounded on top. Um, I actually went a little bit heavier than this and uh, put uh, more uh, dirt than what was originally called for. I'm going to show you how I did everything from start to finish. I cut down my own trees, cut down the logs, uh, dug it out with an excavator, and then put it all together. And I'll show you what it looks like in, in the inside at the end of the video. So you can see here it's a cedar tree I cut down. Cedar is a great type of wood for this sort of activity. Uh, since cedar is less likely to rot, uh, especially since it's going to have dirt on top of it. I actually put some plastic sheeting over the top of my wood though, so hopefully it'll dry out and not be getting wet or uh, getting stuff in it and so the wood will last longer. Um, I also mounted up on the edges, I put rocks along the edges and I'll show you about how I did that. Uh, this is a little dangerous here where I had to cut down this tree because it's about seven foot, you can, seven feet high off the ground, those branches are holding it up, so it took some careful chainsaw work. Uh, I'd strongly suggest uh, watching chainsaw videos on sa chainsaw safety if you want to cut your own logs like I did here. Um, once again, you can see uh, uh, some of those trees and where I was going. Uh, those are my logs, uh, that's my ditch, and I've got two logs there uh, currently. Um, I realized once I put some of these logs across that actually I was too short. So the government plan called for seven foot wide poles. Uh, mine ended up being about eight feet and that wasn't enough. So actually I had to go back and cut down uh, some more trees and uh, to get 10 foot poles that made me feel a little more secure. Uh, I also decided to build a, a cave-in walls I'm talking about right now. Uh, so basically there's uh, uh, I, I built out of 2x12s I had left over from uh, a concrete shed basement that I built. Uh, I had these 2x12s and I used 2x4s uh, and nailed those on and uh, created kind of these uh, cave-in fences so if the, the walls came in it, it would be contained a little bit and also like if it slumped down uh, I'll be able to tell is the it'll be sitting on the 2x12s and uh, hopefully if it caved in in a, in a more dire way that would help give a little extra support um, and security. I'll show you how I did all that. Uh, I think it's an improvement on the government's old plan here, uh, especially since my soil type is very sandy and uh, really given to kind of collapse. <laughs> so um, maybe you'll have a soil type with more clay, be a little bit more solid to work with, but I just didn't have that here on my property. Um, now there's my chainsaw, which worked only about half the time. <laughs> uh, another photo of, of how this looks. Now that right there, that's that's the 2x12. Each one of those planks are 16 foot long 2x12s. They may look small in the picture, but they're very large planks. There's two of them on each side. I built uh, two of these walls, and then I coated them with uh, wood sealant uh, so that they'll last a little longer. They're going to be in ground contact. Uh, it'll be dry ground. I'm not sure exactly how long it'll last. Uh, I put cross bracing across the top here. You can see those uh, boards going across the top. That'll help keep uh, the compression if uh, a wall caves in from totally collapsing inwards. Those trash buckets are actually full of water. Uh, that's the water supply and that's the cheapest container for water that I could find that would uh, hold uh, the amount of water you need to stay underground for uh, between two to six weeks depending on uh, what the situation is. Uh, I also have a hand crank radio. There's my little man, <laughs> a little helper. Uh, I have a hand crank radio that uh, will help hopefully gather information from the government if there was a case of a nuclear attack. Um, I'm actually only eight miles away as the bird flies from Joint Base 
Lewis uh, McCord, which is the fourth largest military base in the world and the U.S.'s only uh, nuclear ba nuclear base that handles aircraft that transports nukes. Uh, so I think that would be top of Putin's list, which is the reason I built this. Now you can see there I put up, put rocks on either ledge, and those rocks are so that we can put uh, logs across it and not have those uh, logs in ground contact. Now ground contact is going to be what rots out these logs uh, quicker than anything else. Uh, here's the view. I've got plastic put over the top and some dirt. Uh, and that's uh, that plastic's going to help uh, keep keep the logs dry. And then I put on a layer of dirt, and I actually put another layer of plastic on top of that. Uh, and the idea there is that uh, that top layer of plastic will shed the water. The lower one will protect the logs from the dirt uh, and any water that did get through. Um, and keep it drier. I also put on uh, some brush just sort of as a disguise so people wouldn't see it from the house or whatnot. It just kind of looks like a brush pile. I'm going to trim back that plastic here eventually that you see there. Now that's a three foot wide ditch down there, three foot, actually about three and a half feet wide and about four feet tall. Um, that's about as d deep as you can make it uh, safely. Um, and you can see there that those, those are pretty tall trash cans, but uh, you may not be able to tell how to, to give you a scale of this. Uh, then I have a little pathway that comes down. And then here's what it looks like on the inside. Uh, so this is about 14 feet long, uh, 3 feet wide, 4 feet deep. It'll fit my whole family, uh, all four of us, in case of an emergency where a nuclear bomb had gone off and there was fallout coming. Um, it's not going to be the most comfortable, but we will survive and not get radiation sickness and not be trapped behind uh, 10 million other vehicles trying to exit the Seattle-Tacoma area um, at that time. So this will give us a little bit of space. It's at our house. Uh, we'll put food and uh, a radio in here and should be a good solution, hopefully. Uh, hopefully we never have to use it.